So this battery is upside down because it is so heavy. It is 200 pounds. This is literally the largest battery I've ever tested on this channel. This is a 10 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate, 48 volt battery. So this battery comes with a massive power pole connector cable, which is rated for 350 amps. And this is a 48 volt battery charger. And this can output 1,300 watts. So it will take about seven hours to charge up this battery to full. And the main plug connects right here. We have an on and off switch, communication ports, and some DIP switches if you want to change any of the settings. This is very difficult. Maybe I'm too weak. Oh, I did it. I know this looks awful, but we're gonna charge it the old fashioned way with some alligator clips. Being careful not to cause a dead short across these huge conductors, that would be awful. God, this scares me. I do not like this much current potential. So now the charger's connected and turned on, but we need to turn the battery on. So let's just turn the on and off switch. And now it's on. Enter, oh, there we go. So we have 20 amps going into this battery and we're at a 53% state of charge. So it'll only take about three to four hours to fully charge this pack. The current dropped to zero and we are fully charged. So now the battery is connected to my CBA4 and amplifier system and we're gonna do a capacity test. And we're gonna do this in amp hours. It's rated for 200 amp hours at 51.2 volts nominal. And the max current that we can pull at this voltage is 8.7 amps. So this test is gonna take 22 hours to complete. I have to make sure every number is correct. I do not wanna screw this up. And now the test is started. 201 amp hours and 10,492 watt hours. But it still passed the test. We have one amp hour more than the rated capacity. Oh boy. So the main cables are multiple eight gauge conductors, 200 C rated insulation. They really cram these cells in here. We have a bunch of fiberboard and tape. This large PCB is the BMS. And you'll notice that this one is different than others that we test because the negative is where the shunt is and the bank of power MOSFETs is connected to the positive. So we have a B positive and a P positive. Typically it's B negative and P negative. So I've never seen this configuration before. And what's nice is Considering how much current this can handle, this was designed well. There should be no current sharing issues. You'll notice that they are all divided up properly. And every wire is well organized. They wrapped it up, have it zip tied down. So I like what they did over here. There's nothing bad that I can see so far. And over here are the temperature sensor leads. And there's four on this battery. So there's two right here and two right here. And all of these colorful wires are the balance leads. So, so far I do not see anything wrong. Um, there's conformal coating, we've got a steel case, nice, large, heavy duty power pull connector. All of the conductors are the right size. So yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Holy cow. I feel like I'm a bank robber and I just opened up a vault. Look at how many small cells we have inside. There are so many cells. All right, let's count them up. 63. 64. So 64 divided by 16 is four and 200 divided by four is 50. So these are 50 amp hour cells. These bus bars, the size and how they're welded together, balance leads have glue on them and the temperature sensors also are protected. Imagine if you dropped a wrench on top of this, that would be devastating, man. That is scary to think about. So the main positive is over here. The main negative is right here, but we have extra wires on the positive terminals over here. Oh, Oh, and these are for paralleling them. So even though they're black wires, they're actually the positive leads. And it puts this pack into series, I see. So this is cell pack one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then it jumps over here. Yep, see that? We have a big bus bar right there. And then the rest of the cell packs all the way to the positive. That must have taken some time and thinking to figure out how to put all these cells in here so it would actually fit this box. 
but it's scary to think that we have one piece of fiberboard protecting all of those bus bars and terminals from metal straps that go across the front. So personally, I would not use this in a high vibration environment. This is for stationary use only. Actually, I just noticed something. This battery is supposed to be mounted to a wall. This would be the top and down here would be the bottom. So that means that these cells are laying on top of each other like this horizontally. And on most data sheets, they do not recommend that. Typically, they recommend that the cell is vertical or if it's on its side, that it's th going this way, not horizontally. Because some argue that the lattice will not be soaked in the electrolyte and you will have reduced performance. And in my personal experience of having these cells leak, I like to have the overpressure relief valve sticking up. So personally, for long-term use, I'm going to actually have this facing upward on its back how it is. I don't think I would want to mount it on the wall. Another concern for this pack is that these cells could be pushing down on the one on bottom when this is mounted to a wall. But I don't think that that's a problem considering how these are connected to these bus bars. But again, if you have a high vibration environment, maybe you could break loose the connection between the lattice and the terminal or possibly one of these bus bars, but I highly doubt it because that's very hard to break these, but you could possibly damage the cell. And that's all I can think of. You can see that the temperature sensors are placed in different locations. Um, everything else looks pretty good, but uh, yeah, very interesting that they configured the cells in this fashion. But I'm pretty sure they probably thought it out, or maybe not. I've seen a lot of mistakes by different battery manufacturers. This looks pretty professional, so I would think that it's all right. And they offer a 20-year warranty or something, so I don't think they would want to mess around with that. So maybe these cells are okay on their sides. And it really depends on the cells. Some of them say that it's fine, so who knows? Just want you guys to know that you should have a lot of respect for batteries of this size because there is a lot of potential energy stored in these. I like opening them when they're at a low state of charge, but it really doesn't make a difference. They're all dangerous in some way or another. There's just a lot of electrons that want to flow out of this thing. That was easy to open up actually. I don't think you can service those cells, but very easy to open up if you have to like swap out the BMS or something. So in the future, I'm gonna have a rack for all of the batteries for this system. But for now, I just wanna hook this up and use it. So we're gonna use the power pole connector and cable. So first we connect this cable to our system and then we plug it into the battery. And because we have so many batteries connected in parallel, I like to add my own circuit breaker between each pack. Because having this many parallel strings of current sources scared me, so it's nice to have a backup. And I'm using 4 aught gauge cable to connect to the circuit breaker. And you can have a maximum of 3 lugs to each terminal going by ABYC. God, these are hard, man. <laughs> And now I need to switch it on. And now the screen has lit up and it is charging the battery. So on the main screen, it says we're at 44.9 volts. 10 amps are going in from the system and we're at practically 0% state of charge. And there's a Y for yes for warning because it's at low voltage disconnect. It's still charging up. But you can also access other menu settings. So press the down button and you'll see cell voltage, temperature, warning, and capacity. So wherever it's flashing, that means that it's selected. So let's press enter for cell voltages and you will see all of the cell voltages in this pack. Going by the cell voltage right now at 0% state of charge, I'm imagining that it disconnected at 2.5 and then it settled at 2.8. So we can go down and we can look at all of the cell pack voltages and then press escape, and then press down to go to temperature, press enter. These are the temperature sensors and what temperature they're reporting. We can press escape, press down again. The warning, so you can see over voltage warning, no. Over voltage protection, no. But under voltage protection warning, yes, because it's at a low state of charge, but the under voltage protection is not triggered right now. So we press escape, and then go down and then the capacity check this out it shows you what the shunt has recorded on the last cycle and then what it's recording right now so it's at a very low state of charge so it's showing practically a zero and then how many cycles we have done so this battery has been cycled three times before i had it and then i did the fourth cycle with my capacity test and then you can press escape and escape and you're back to the main screen 
And that's pretty much it. It's very easy to navigate through these menus. I've been using the battery for two weeks now. I've been cycling it every day, moving it around, rebuilding my system and connecting it at different points. So I actually have an opinion on how it works. I also read the whole manual. And so far I do not have many complaints, but in my opinion, I think it's too heavy. Maybe it's because I'm too weak, but 226 pounds is a lot for me. And if I sit down like this, the battery is literally bigger than me. So unless you're a bodybuilder, I recommend most people getting the five or the seven and a half kilowatt hour model of this battery pack. And so far I thought it was five, 7.5 and 10 kilowatt hours, but they have a 13 kilowatt hour pack as well. I think most people could manage a five or 7.5 kilowatt hour model, no problem. But when you get to the 10 or the 13, I mean, this is a lot of weight. So ensure that you do not have any stairs or ramps and you have some friends that can help you lift it. Next, I realized that there are lots of distributors coming out with similar batteries. I have batteries under this blanket that I'm not allowed to show you, but they have the same exact communication port, DIP switch, the reset button is the same, um, and also the meter in the interface. And most of these packs have either CATL cells or EVE cells. And so far it's been running flawlessly. I really don't have any complaints on using it. Also having a real state of charge indicator on the battery, when I walk into my shop, I just look at this light and then I know what the state of charge is for my entire pack. And I really like that. Previously, I'd have to log into the Victron shunt with my phone and then check it. But now I just come in here and I'm like, oh, I've got power or I don't have power and that's it. Also, I said that I wanted the terminal sticking straight up and I still do not have the data sheet stating if that's good or bad but um, I'm buying this with my own money. They provide these for testing, but I have to give them back. But I'm actually gonna buy this one because it's so cheap. And I'm actually gonna mount it like this. This will ensure that the batteries are on the bottom so there's a lower center of gravity. And yeah, I'm not gonna mount 226 pounds onto my wall. That would just be nuts. And in my opinion, it should be fine like this. It also takes up a lot less space. I could easily stack them side by side right here or put them along this wall. If I were to orient these how I wanted them initially with the terminals facing up, I couldn't really stack them because the screen's on this side. And this case seems strong on all angles. So I think it's fine to have it in this orientation. Also, I had low voltage disconnect. Um, it was connected to my system solar turned on in the morning and it charged right back up again and everything else has worked flawlessly I really like these cables wherever they source these the lugs um, everything is very high quality so I'm gonna cycle it for a few months if I notice any problems I will be sure to let you know I can also count the cycles and do state of charge testing on this screen so yeah in like three or six months I'll let you guys know what the current capacity is of this pack and these types of batteries are coming to the market in about five to six months I have a few distributors that have very similar batteries but this one still has the lowest cost for this size so this is a pretty good deal compared to some of the other distributors that I talked to but I'm sure someone will come out with a cheaper one in six months or a year and then they'll drop the prices of this one and so on and so forth but be sure to compare the warranties because this one has a 20-year warranty um, I know warranties mean absolutely nothing if the business closes, but if it's a big business and they have a good warranty, then I think you're better off with this one. But please let me know. If you guys find a better deal or something, or you find this exact same battery somewhere else, please let me know. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.